your feet Cause you're the only one I need I turn to you and you are always there In troubled times, it's you I see I put you first, that's all I need I humble all I am, all to you So deeply within me You will never, ever change Yesterday, today the same Forever till forever means no end One way, Jesus You're the only one that I could live We're gonna get really quiet and really low, so let's see how low we can go. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith, not by sight. For you, we're living all for you. A little higher. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith, not by sight. Higher, here we go. You are the way, the truth, and the life we live by faith, not by sight. For you, we're living all for you. Even louder. You are the way, the truth, and the life we live by faith, and not by sight. For you, we're living all for you. Well, good morning, Cam Quasson. Uh, okay, so I, my name's Tim, and I, I've been one of the speakers at the camp a whole bunch. And, and so usually when I get started, I like to say good morning and then have you say good morning back. And I know that I probably can't hear you. Well, I, I can't hear you, but I'm still going to do it anyway. And in my heart, I'm just going to trust that when I say good morning, you're going to say good morning back to me. Kind of loud, maybe, maybe you know, freak out your parents. I don't know, whatever it is. I'm just, I'm going to say good morning, and I'm going to trust that you are going to say good morning back to me. Okay, so here we go. Everybody ready? Good morning. Okay, wow, that was loud. I'm just, I mean, I'm assuming it was loud. I don't know if it was loud, but I'm, I'm going to guess that it was loud. Hey, I'm excited to be able to hang out with you uh, right now, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching, uh, to be able to share with you just a, a few thoughts from God's Word this morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching. And, and so I'm excited that you're here to join with us. And, and so I want to ask you a question as we get going. How long do you think you could wait? If you had your favorite snack in front of you, whether it's chips or ice cream or pizza, or maybe it's a hamburger, or maybe it's, I don't know, but I'm starting to get hungry. Imagine that you had it right in front of you. And someone said to you, you can look at it, but you can't eat it. How long do you think you could last? One minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, who knows? Uh, let me ask you this question. How long does it usually take you to do something that you don't want to do? Maybe maybe your mom or your dad or your aunt or your uncle or your grandma or your grandpa ask you to, to clean your room or to help with the dishes. 
or to get your pajamas on or to go to bed. How long does it take you to listen? See, sometimes we're not really good at doing stuff that we shouldn't do. And we're also sometimes not really great at doing the things that we should do. We come up with lots of excuses. You know, maybe if you've been told to clean your room and, and all of a sudden you're, you're too tired. Or you, or you don't know how. Or, or you need help. Or you can't remember where things go. Maybe you get asked to do something around the house. Like, like maybe, you know, go online and do some homework. And all of a sudden you say, oh, I, I just got distracted. Or I, I forgot that you asked me. Or we come up with all sorts of really great excuses not to do the things that we're supposed to do. And that's not great. <laughs> And what's interesting is we don't just do that to our parents. Sometimes we do that to God. God, who's our Heavenly Father, who loves us so very much, He cares about you, and He knows you, and He has things for you to do. God has created you on purpose, with gifts and abilities and talents, and there are things that He has for you to do to help share His love and His goodness and His grace to the world around it, to, to share the message that, that Jesus loves us that he came and he died for us, that there's all sorts of things that God wants you to be a part of, to announce the fact that Jesus didn't stay dead, that he rose again, that, that, that God loves the world. You and I, if we're followers of Jesus, have, have a role to play in that. And maybe it even, even if you don't know what that is, that idea about having a relationship with Jesus, that's part of it, is that God has created all of us to have a relationship with him. And he's inviting us to step out into something more than just ourselves. And yet sometimes we come up with really good excuses not to. Maybe we think that the stuff that God is calling us to do is too hard, or it's not for us, or it might be embarrassing or difficult, or we're not even quite sure what it means. And so we come up with excuses not to. But that doesn't change the fact that God still has something for you and I to do. That God has created us on purpose. That he has a mission for us. And we need to be willing to follow and obey. I want to really quickly start a story with you today, and I'm going to finish it on, on our next. We're going to do kind of two hangouts, and, and so I'm going to start the story on this one. I'm going to finish it on the next one, but our story comes from the Bible, and it's about this guy named Jonah, and you can find it in a book of the Bible called, appropriately enough, Jonah. And right off the start, it, this is what it says. It's real simple. It says, the Lord gave a message to Jonah. He said, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment because the people there are wicked, and, and, and they need to know this. Basically, there was a city called Nineveh where lots of bad things happened. Uh, and God wanted to change that. He wanted to, to tell them that they needed to live differently. And so he chose Jonah to go. And he gave Jonah a very clear, very specific instruction. Hey, get up and go to Nineveh and, and tell the people what I want them to hear. But it's interesting. We look at the second verse or the third verse of the, of the, of the, of the, of the passage. It says, but Jonah gets up. So he listens to the first part. God said, get up and go to Nineveh. Jonah does that. He gets up and he goes the opposite direction. He's trying to get away from the Lord, it says. He's trying to run and hide from God, which is challenging because God is everywhere. And he says that he gets up and he goes to the city named Joppa, where there's a port, where there's places where boats are coming in and out. And he finds a ship that is leaving to a place called Tarshish, which is in the opposite direction from Nineveh. And he gets on that boat. He buys a ticket and he gets on the boat, hoping to sail away. Hoping that God's going to miss him somehow, that he's going to forget where he is, that, that somehow this excuse of, oh, I got lost, I went on the boat in the wrong direction, is somehow going to trick God and, and get Jonah out of doing what God has called him to do. But what's fascinating is as the boat takes off, we're told that this great storm kicks up. It's, it says that it's a, it's a powerful storm. It says that the Lord hurled a powerful storm. You can almost imagine Jonah on the boat and God's like, oh, oh really? And he hurls this powerful storm at him. And it says that the sea began to, to shake and, and waves were coming and the wind was crashing and the rain's coming down. And it says that it, it actually threatened to break the ship apart. And this isn't a little boat. He's not in a kayak or a little canoe. He's on a big boat. And this wind and the storm is so powerful that it threatens to tear the boat apart. And, and all of the men on the boat, the guys that work for the boat that are heading on there, they're, they're panicking. They're freaking out because this storm is crazy. And they're trying to figure out what they can do. And they're throwing all of this sort of stuff overboard. And they're, they're praying to, the, to their gods, to the people that they think are going to help them. But they're not really gods. And, and so they're not going to get much help there. And all this time, we're told that Jonah is sound asleep in the bottom of the boat. I'm not sure how he sleeps like that. And actually, 
that's what the captain of the boat says. He finds him sleeping and he comes out and he shakes him awake and he says, how can you sleep at a time like this? And Jonah quickly realizes what's going on, that this storm is happening. And he gets this sense that this isn't a regular storm. That this is what God is doing to wake him up, to catch his attention, to help him see just how important this mission is. And so Jonah says to them, well, fellas, the storm isn't going to stop uh, until I go overboard. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Jonah says, I, I realize that I haven't been doing what I'm supposed to do. And I, I worship the God who's in charge of all of this stuff. And he says, you got you to gotta throw me into the sea and it's going to calm the storm. Because I know this terrible storm is my fault. The men don't want to do that. So they work harder to try and fix it. And they throw other stuff overboard. And Jonah just keeps saying, it's got to be me. And so this man who is running away from God, who realizes that God invited him to do something and he was saying no to it, says, well, I got to go overboard. And so they pick him up and they throw him overboard into the middle of a raging storm. And you're going to have to tune in next time to figure out what happens next. But I want you to realize this, that God has something for you and I to do. He has a plan and a purpose for you and he wants you to do it. Now, he might not throw a storm at you. You're probably not going to have to get thrown into a raging sea. But God wants you to follow him, to listen to him, to trust him, to understand that he knows what he's doing. And he invites you to be a part of something so much bigger than yourself. So I hope you'll tune in next time to figure out what happens to Jonah the rest of the way. Uh, and I hope that you listen for God. Listen for him inviting you on, on a mission, inviting you to follow his purpose, inviting you to follow his lead. And trust me, you're going to want to do it because God has such a beautiful adventure in store for you. So God bless you today and we'll see you next time.